Hello, hello, beautiful soul. Are you ready for another interview in our Ask the Author series for the book, The Top 10 Traits of Highly Resilient People? I know you are, that's why you're here. And today I'm excited to bring the story and the light and the love that is Gerd Stotland from Norway. She is a very special dear friend who really had some amazing, enlightening experiences about her own healing journey, healing from a trauma that happened before she was even two years old. And not only that, it's allowed her to understand and recognize patterns in her relationships and in her life that have completely set her free. And I know it will do the same for you. Now, this is particularly important because many of us go through patterns and cycles where we see the same thing showing up in the outside world or inside with symptoms or in our relationships, and we don't know what is wrong. It's so easy for us to blame outside circumstances, and it's sometimes very difficult to have that insight that the problem may be within us. And I don't mean that in a blaming way. I mean that we have to develop the insight and the awareness to understand the root cause of our persistent problems. So tune into this interview. I think you're going to be surprised and inspired, as I was, and uh, I look forward to hearing your feedback. Gerd Stotland, it is so wonderful to connect with you again. Thank you for sharing your story with us in this book, The Top 10 Traits of Highly Resilient People. And thank you very much for having me, Andrea. I feel so honored to uh, have written in your book and to have this conversation with you. (laughs) Hmm. Well, I feel honored to know you. It has been such a blessing in my life for the last couple of years to get to know you. And I just love that you're at this phase in your life where you are ready and willing to share your wisdom and your insights through coaching, through workshops, through public speaking. Um, You're quite an inspiration to me. Oh, thank you. (laughs) I'm happy to hear that. (laughs) Well, it's been amazing. I mean, this story that you share in the book is like the perfect example that even if we've struggled in life, we still can revive or awaken some of these resilience traits. Now, you describe in the book that you had struggled for decades of your life in relationships with similar patterns repeating. And then in 2005, you had an awakening moment that gave you insight into yourself and the source of those patterns. So it's so critical for so many of us um, because it's very easy to fall into patterns and we think that somewhere out there must be the problem. until we finally are willing to say, okay, maybe it's me. So tell me about what happened in 2005 that led you to really understand about your own um, patterns that needed to be healed. I was in a relationship uh, and had been there for, for six, seven years. And one day my partner came home and he told me that he had fallen in love with a young woman colleague and he wanted to move out of our yes to to end our relationship and i really fell down to the deepest deepest darkness in my life because i had uh, been into several relationships where the same thing happened and i started then to to see that and I, i was in this darkness for quite a long time but then I, one day I, I really thought that there must be something inside me. Uh, and I, I started to see the repetitive patterns that I had had through life. This uh, anxiety for tying to tight ties to people, dragging them to me with one hand and pushing them away with the other hand. And I could really see how my role was in this. uh, Well, I started to see it. It took some while, of course, but I really saw that I have this pattern and also develop a kind of controlling behavior uh, 
in relationships. Mm. It was not an, a nice insight, but I had to be honest with myself. And I also could see the, the connection uh, to this uh, childhood trauma that I have written about in the book, and I, I am, I know for sure that that was the reason for my repetitive patterns. So, well, let's explore that, that because it, what happened to you um, when you were a little baby is that you got sick, right? So, so tell us about yeah. that because I feel like so many people would not be able to remember it just like you didn't because you were so little like mostly if someone has experienced abuse or trauma or neglect they can remember it because they were old enough but you didn't really have enough brain development to totally remember exactly what happened until there was a, another pattern revealed to you right yes that's true yeah but but i had this uh, memory uh, or, or it was a picture that I had carried from early childhood. It was the first memory in my life, hmm. this back of my father through a glass door in the hospital, leaving me for six weeks. And I was not, uh, I was 22 months wow. at, at this uh, point. And I, I know for sure I have carried this picture hmm. my whole life, as so long as I can remember. So you were not even two years old and you had to be left in the hospital for six weeks. What kind of condition did you have that, that they couldn't bring you home? Uh, I had a kidney stone and it was quite uh, serious. Uh, they had never had a, a, a young child like me right. in Norway uh, with this kidney stone. So I had to stay there for six week, weeks hmm. and my family lived far away in Norway. This was in the main hospital in Oslo. So my father had to go back to home to my mother and my sister that was one year older than me. So I had to stay there. And that was the, the way it was in these uh, days. Uh, a lot of children were left on hospital alone. Wow. And I think I'm not the only one who has this trauma. But maybe we don't uh, recognize it. Exactly. And so you say mm. your first memory was seeing the back of your father leaving, going through this glass door. But, and yes. something triggered that. It was seeing somebody else that triggered that memory, right? Was it your daughter? Yes, yes. That was around 2000. I, I don't remember exactly the year, but we went out... Uh, eating, we had a lovely time together, and we said goodbye, she had moved away from home, so she turned her back to me and was going in one direction, I was going in the other direction, but then suddenly something made me turn around to look at her, and I saw her back. And I had a really, really strong um, uh, emotional reaction I was starting crying on in the middle of the street in Oslo, oh. and <laughs> the, and then I really thought, what is this with me and the backs? Because always I, I had this uh, trouble when people turned around and left me to say goodbye. Maybe it was only for one day, two days, but I always had struggled with this people turning around and leaving me, but I hadn't understand what it was. But then this back of my daughter around 2000 really started something in me. And I think there must be something here. And I also discussed it with my father. Mm. And then he said, I have to admit something. He said, I left you two times. Oh. Because he came to pick me up after six weeks. But they were not ready with all the tests. Oh. So they could not put me out of the hospital. And he, he had a sister in Oslo. So he said, OK, then I go and see her for a moment while I am here. Wow. But when he come back there, I didn't have one reaction in my face. Hmm. I did not not with one, uh, oh, well, how to say it in English, you know, this mimic. There was nothing, nothing, nothing that I, the signs of recognition. Wow. 
So it's like you just life. decided to shut down. <laughs> just yes. Oh totally. wow. Yes. And so, so what do you think I, that, so then you think that's what set up these pattern of like wanting to hold people close, but also pushing them away to protect yourself yeah. from being abandoned again? Yes, I think so. And also, uh, I, I felt very lonely as a child and I didn't uh, go into close relationship and I didn't trust people. That was also a pa pattern. I couldn't trust anybody. So, yes, I'm sure it... Uh, has a connection to this trauma mm -hmm. after what I've learned today about. <laughs> so I see this yeah. very clearly. Yeah. So then catch us back up. So back into 2015, this relationship ends, you go through this dark period. How did you get from there to where you are now, where you recognized all of these patterns and where the source was and how you could heal to be more resilient today? Yes, I, I recognize. Uh, I realized uh, back in 2015 when I started to see a glimpse of light again hmm. in the darkness that I needed help. Yeah. That was the first thing. I needed help, but I, I didn't know where to find it because this uh, healing world was quite new for me. But I went into a bookstore. I was on my cabin up in the mountains when I had this glimpse of light and on my way back I passed a town in Norway and I went into a bookstore and there I walked along the among the bookshelves and then I suddenly saw Louise Hay's smiling face and the title you can heal your life and I thought this is exactly what I need so I bought the book and I came home and I started to read it. I read it very quick <laughs> and started to implement some of her affirmations. And it was really, really a good start for me, this uh, Louis Hayes book. And then I came across this EFT, Emotional Freedom Techniques. I was in a kind of, um, you call it complementary Messe, uh, yeah, and uh, there was a uh, uh, roller. It, it was emotional freedom techniques and what it helped for. And said, this is exactly for me, just as Louis Hayes book was. Right. So I started to explore that, and I found it so interesting and so helpful that I wanted to study to be an EFT therapist. So, so for, for people who don't know, EFT is that meridian tapping where you're like yes, it's, tapping away yes, yeah, the, yes, the stressful yes. emotions and yeah. Yeah, it's, a, it's very similar to thought felt therapy, yes. So it's the tapping and I found it very useful. Uh, and uh, I started and uh, yeah, after that, I, I was still a teacher when I learned this. Uh, but back in 2010, then I stopped as a teacher and I had become an EFT therapist and a hypnotherapist. So I started to work with this. Uh, but uh, in 2010, also my, uh, my grandson uh, was born. I stopped teaching in June 2010 and he was born in October 2010. So the universe had something in store. It was so well timed. Yeah. Because, yes, it was. So I had to step in a lot to. I wanted to help my daughter, of course. Uh, and uh, I, uh, and when I stopped teaching, I had more freedom to do it. But I also did this uh, uh, EFT and hypnotherapy besides. But. The more I learned, the more I practiced, the more I want to learn. And uh, I was really so fired up with this energy work. So that is where I'm so passionate now to help people raise their awareness about their energies and how it impacts our life in the physical, emotional and mental uh, level. Yeah. And it's... It's really only ourselves, our own responsibility. Yeah. 
It is. To, well, and also of, as a single person, when you you know that how many people one person on a high level can impact uh, uh, people on a lower level uh, energetically, and it it makes so much sense yeah. to raise your own vibration. Yes. And so part of yeah. you helping people to raise their vibration, you, you um, a couple of years ago when we first, uh, when you first came to one of my trainings, uh, you met one of our other authors at Make Your Mark Global, Yvette Taylor. She's the creator of the Energy Alignment Method. And now you are on track to become a mentor of this EAM technique, right? Yes, that's true. <laughs> I thought about it this morning also, how uh, I met you in uh, El Chain two and a half years ago, and then I went to your workshop, and uh, on the same time I learned Gitte Winter uh, Grago to know, and I also am so passionate about her books, so yes. I have now translated one of her books to Norwegian. And I, I met Eva Taylor through you. So uh, this uh, workshop in London two years ago was really uh, life changing for me. Yes. yes. Well, I am so grateful for this, Andrea. <laughs> and I am, so, I am as well because it really is inspiring to see the shifts that have happened in you personally as you've gained insight and you've really just kept going and going with all these different tools for healing yourself. And then, as I said, sharing it with others to heal other people. It's just beautiful. So, Gerd, I can't wait to see what's coming next. I know that you're going to be doing workshops in Norway and other places. And since you came to our speaker training and you keep doing more and more, now you're going to be out there doing public speaking. I love it. <laughs> we see, yeah, I have. I am very inspired now. I, I am, and I, I, I have a lot of uh, plans for myself. But I have to to uh, take care of myself because yes. I have not the same energy as when I was twenty. Uh, so I have to to choose wisely yeah. where to put my energy. Yeah. Well, but the, the, the direction is clear. Yes. And my inspiration, yes. I love so it. So I'm very happy for that. <laughs> so um, it is quite a journey, but I am so happy for having these plans for my with uh, older days. Yes, mm -hmm. I have a direction and a goal for my uh, life, and uh, yeah. So I'm quite excited. Uh, what is going on next yeah me <laughs> too you know, in store for me yes yes so, <laughs> so the, uh, wonderful well there you have it ladies and gentlemen you can check out gerd's story in the top 10 traits of highly resilient people she's in the the chapter about insight that self-awareness that we've been talking about and i know that it's going to inspire you when you read all of the details of how her own awakening unfolded and you can Find out where to connect with Gerd online, on Facebook. Um, all the links will be around this video. So once again, Gerd, thank you so very much. You are such a beautiful picture of resilience. And I'm grateful that the world will now be able to read your story in English. And we'll, we'll get it around the world. So, and thank you very much for having me, Andrea. It has been a pleasure to speak with you and to come into your book, to share my story. I was a bit afraid, but I feel happy now. I'm really, really, really grateful for all what you have done. It's my to pleasure. Me in the, on, on this journey. It is a pleasure so, and an honor. For me too. <laughs> So, um, thank you very much, Andrea. You're welcome. So, my friends, there you have it. Please pick up a copy of the book and connect with the authors online. And remember, until we meet again, you are a gift to the world. So share your presence with passion. Much love. Bye-bye. <laughs>